So recently we tested the 7950X and the Radeon 7900XDX in Premiere Pro and a lot of people commented and said that can you test this on DaVinci Resolve and that's what we're going to be doing today. How good is the AMD and AMD, the best AMD PC combo in DaVinci Resolve? We can often see that Premiere Pro isn't as good utilizing the GPU and CPU as DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve seems to be the more advanced software. Let's go. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. Now, I've actually teared down the PC that you actually saw or what you can see on the b-roll but I have the test bench set up over here which has exactly the same part because the test bench essentially was inside that PC just we don't have the case around that we might have a different cooler but for the cooler we're using the ROG Strix LC2 360 millimeter AIO with Fantex T30 fans so cooling is not going to be a problem we're going to be using the power color Red Devil limited edition 7900 XDX and the Ryzen 7950X if you want to know all the other specs I'm going to leave that in the description below so you can kind of find the rest of the specs but also what's very important to know is that here on software side of things we are running the updated driver 23.1.1 right now okay we've got the igp on as well as the dedicated gpu as you can see in here both of them are here i'm going to leave the task manager open on the side so we can actually keep an eye on this and we can see how this actually affects uh, you know different parts of the hardware in the background i'm also going to be running the hardware monitor so we can see later on if there's been like many very high temperatures or how much power did we draw or something like that if there's been any other issues then we've got the davinci resolve open and we're using davinci resolve 18.1.2 and the preferences in terms of t code decode we have as such so amd has been selected right and for timeline we're using a 4k timeline right now and we have no proxies enabled nothing of the sort so let's go this is now h264 i'm gonna leave the metadata open there as well so you can kind of see what i'm talking about there but this is 30 frames per second 10 bit 422 and as you can see we're gonna press play by the way this has a color grade attached to it or applied to it as well so if i'm gonna take this off you can see there's a little color grade it's just to uh, stretch the gpu a little bit there's got some noise reduction and so on in so if we go here you can see curves another lot second lot and then there is actually a noise reduction there as well and so we can we can test that some people say you should uh, have a different order of the noise reduction and so on but let me know what you think in the comment section below what's the optimal way of utilizing the hardware and the color grade and editing flow but this one right here 30 frames per second 422 pressing play it seems like it's it's got no problems doing that as you can see we've got 4.5 gigabytes of gpu memory used that's very smooth so this is 25 frames per second 422 very similar i see no problem here and playing this back, timeline scrubbing is slightly more laggy, but probably because it's got less frames there. When I press and play, it's it's fine. As you can see, the GPU is just playing back the color grade, but the, the footage is actually played back on the CPU there. And now this is SI or all intra clip from Sony A7S3, 4K, 4 to 2, 10 bit, 25 frames per second as well. It's very, very smooth if I'm pressing play. Yeah, it seems like it's got no problem playing it back. Timeline clicking is very good as well. All of this. Yeah, it's very good. Now we're going to 60 frames per second F H.264 still. One of them is 4208 bit. One of them is 4210 bit. So basically similar clips, but a little bit more frames per second, if that makes sense. So 60 frames per second. We're still on 4K timeline, so this is like a native timeline for the clip. Pressing play, very, very smooth. No problems. And 422 now. This is uh, a little bit more laggy, but this is purely like software playback. There's no hardware decode for this 
clip because this is H.264 422 10-bit. So playing back, it's all right. As you can see, our CPU there is a bit more utilized. But still very, very good, no problem. By the way, can someone tell me how can I make sure that the actual playback is happening native to the frame rate as well. I'm here on the edit tab and whenever I press play, it always kind of goes on 24 frames per second. Can you see there? It was a little bit struggling there, but it's not playing it back 60 frames per second. So I'm not seeing the native resolution. I don't know how to change that. Can someone help me out in the comments below? Okay, let's move on to H.265. So there's different H.265 clips here. This is 50 frames per second, 420, 10-bit. And usually that is played back on the GPU, at least Nvidia and Intel uh, iGPU and dedicated GPUs can play this back on the hardware. And let's have a look if it's doing it on here as well. As you can see video codec zero, I think that's where it's happening there, the playback of this. If I'm scrubbing through, yeah, there we go. See that? decoder there went boom it's very very smooth now this is h265 420 10-bit 24 frames per second basically just less frames per second as the previous one still very very good played back on the gpu that's pretty good now this is h265 4k 24 frames per second 422 10-bit and this is where you can see it's played back on the CPU because it can't be played back on the GPU. There's no hardware acceleration on Nvidia, neither on AMD for that. But Intel QuickSync can play this back on hardware. Clicking on the timeline is a little bit more laggy now. But it's only 24 frames per second, so it should be... It, it is slightly getting to the laggy, laggy side now. But it's all right. Now here is... This is where... It, where it gets hard okay this is h265 422 60 frames per second 10 bit footage from canon r5 and this is what usually on intel systems it has intel quick sync and you can have very very smooth timeline performance in there but right now we're going to press play let's see what happens look at that can it catch up are we playing back okay this is very, very laggy. Definitely not 24 frames per second. As you can see, the CPU is absolutely pegged there to play this back. If we're looking at how many watts does the CPU pull, we're pulling 170 watts from the socket, 86 degrees, because we're not having hardware acceleration for that. If you have hardware acceleration for the likes of Intel, for example, you actually are consuming much less power as well so timeline scrubbing is it is actually quite bad here now is it doable yeah sure it is doable but it's it's not ideal let's try 4k red raw here as well first of all very smooth scrubbing Playback obviously is fine as well. Scrubbing through here. Let's press play. As you can see, DaVinci Resolve loves to use a dedicated video memory here. We're only playing back 4K here and we've got 9.3 gigabytes used. This is red, red 4K raw. But it, it's smooth. But to be honest, I haven't seen any system really struggle with that. You can really play that back on a potato. Let's try 4K timeline here. Scrubbing is all right here. Let's press play. Yeah, it's doing it quite good, but bear in, bear in mind we have a 4K timeline. So we have a 5K clip on a 4K timeline. So it's actually playing it back 4K, not 5K right now. Seems like it's it's got no problem doing this this is pretty pretty smooth and near but let's change the timeline to 5k okay so now we've got a 5k timeline all right we're gonna save that 
let's see what the situation is here now. Scrubbing is a little bit more harder and let's press play. And look at that. It's not, it's not quite doing it. It's struggling again. Very interesting. 5950X wasn't struggling uh, with such uh, footage. Let's try 6K Red Raw. Okay, this first clip here is with color grade as well. They've got slightly different 6K, okay? One of them is a little bit wider, but let's set the timeline resolution to that 6K. I know not a lot of people comment on that, but just I wanna make a comparison to the Premiere Pro video with it because in Premiere Pro, when I've got these clips on the timeline, we are using native timeline to the native resolution, if that makes sense. Of course, you can put a 1080p timeline and later up res it or something like that, but that's what I'm trying to do here, compare it to the previous video. So this, I'm scrubbing through the first clip here with the color grades. It's all right. It's not like amazing. Let's see if I press play now. Look at that. It's struggling to play this back. It's completely... Again, we have the same situation. If you remember 5950X, that processor was actually better than this one here. We are using 12.4 gigabytes of VRAM as well there, by the way. Not as much RAM, but VRAM is quite a bit used. Now, if we take the color grade off, let's try this, okay? Without the color grade and noise reduction, it's quite smooth, this playback here. This is nice, we're gonna press play. That's instant, now I like that. As soon as you hit play here, it does play it back. So the editing of 6K will be quite all right, actually. If you look at the timeline here, that is definitely, definitely smoother. So I've got exactly the same thing open now in Premiere Pro, because I just wanna see it side by side, see if this is working any better or not. I'll leave this open here as well, so we can see, okay? Timeline performance. So obviously this timeline is the same native timeline as if I go sequence, sequence settings, you can see this is the sequence settings. Can you see? Native to the clip, right? We're scrubbing through full resolution. Very smooth. Don't you resolve now? Very, very smooth as well. I don't see any difference here right now between these two clips. Obviously, DaVinci applies the different color uh, space already. Here we see like more like a log. DaVinci has already changed that color space to something else. You can see it's very, very smooth on both of them. Interestingly, it looks like Premiere Pro has more kind of utilization on the CPU. And then if we go to DaVinci Resolve, it uses the resources a bit more better, if that makes sense. Look at that, CPU is not as much utilized as we saw in Premiere Pro. Dedicated memory, you can see we're using 15.4 gigabytes, but I bet that's because we've got Premiere Pro open in the background as well. So let's have a look at the when the color grade has been applied, okay? We're gonna add this. Very, very smooth as well here if you press play you can see it's struggling okay without the color grade it's playing it back zero frames dropped right by the way premiere pro color grade doesn't have a uh, noise reduction on okay which is quite heavy on the gpu it's literally just uh, two lots that's it two lots and curves okay that's it can you see how this is really hard cpu literally 100 percent pegged Let's go back to DaVinci Resolve. Okay, here, there's no color grade applied. Pressing play, it's playing it back, no problem. Let's add the color grade, pressing play. And we are struggling, seriously struggling. So let's go to the color grade and take the noise reduction out from here. Okay. So now noise reduction node is actually out of the equation. So it's just two LUTs and one curves, very similar to Premiere Pro now. With color grade, let's press play. Now it's able to do it. So actually Premiere Pro and DaVinci are quite similar in play in this back here now. And obviously here now, let's see with the color grade, 
so that's with noise reduction as well a bit struggling as you can see okay now i've taken the noise reduction off uh, these clips as well okay so we've just got the color grade when we're pressing play it plays it back no problem 6k with that footage and going back to premiere pro now this is very very similar lots and you can see premiere pro is struggling let's see if it is struggling it did drop a few frames the difference here is that premiere pro actually logs the frame difference uh, the winter resolve kind of makes up for it and starts playing faster and then doesn't show how many frames you've actually dropped um, it just shows like the current state so they're actually both very very similar except DaVinci Resolve to me is using much less resources on the CPU both of the timelines very very smooth I, I can't see a difference there 6kb raw now this is with noise reduction and everything applied let's press play whoa so noise reduction is that one thing that absolutely bottlenecks this GPU, as you can see. NVIDIA GPUs are much better at playing this back. So maybe if you're running a Radeon GPU there, it might be a little bit hard to play back. I've just updated the hardware info there so we can see a bit better what's going on. Currently, it's literally pulling back 325 watts okay it's peaked at 485 at maximum but right now it's pulling that much now that's absolutely ridiculous okay if we go to the color grade tab there i'm going to select all these here and i've taken the noise reduction off here now all right and now playing back look no problem and as you can see total power board power now is 131 watts compared to the 300 like almost three times as much power there so the noise reduction really is very taxing on the amd cards i've seen uh, nvidia cards do a much 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 better job than, than this one okay this is 8k canon raw and let's put the timeline to that resolution as well okay our timeline is the same resolution as this here and you can see our cpu now is quite pegged so if we try to play this back on DaVinci Resolve, we're not actually playing this back. Now what DaVinci Resolve is really good at doing is like utilizing the kind of downscaling and upscaling. So if I put like a 4K timeline, for example, here, let's see. And take the color grade off. We've got a very smooth timeline on 4K, so which basically is uh, like a quarter of the resolution of 8k so the same clip on premiere pro we've got half the resolution or maybe it was quarter of the resolution because quarter of this so it's it's quite smooth as well we can play this back can we play this back quarter of resolution it doesn't actually play back i don't think i know it does but it is losing frames. I don't know what the heck is doing here now. In DaVinci Resolve. Kind of similar timeline performance. So actually, interestingly, I don't see much difference between Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. They're utilizing this very, very similar kind of way. if you add color grade here as well that will be obviously very hard but if i take the noise reduction off here and try to play back this clip with the color grade it's all right but very very cpu bottlenecked let's say you want to edit 8k red raw first of all without the color grade okay and then let's put 8k timeline here as well 81924096 so now we're playing it back one on one pressing play without color grade it's quite smooth actually it's playing it back
This is quite good as well, actually. That's good. Let's go to Premiere Pro. Full resolution. Time sequence is actually... See? The same settings. 4320. Playing back 8K here in DaVinci Resolve without the color grade seems fine. Premiere Pro, exactly the same thing. Full resolution, same timeline settings. Uh, press and play, go. Not as smooth actually. Not as smooth, full resolution. Domain's Resolve is doing a better job playing this back. Now with the color grades, let's see. It's very, very choppy. And if we go to the Rinse Resolve, look at that, we can press play. That is smooth, like to the eye, that is smooth. Much better play, playback than on Premiere Pro. So the DaVinci Resolve does utilize the hardware much better. And look, the CPU is hardly used. GPU, yeah, we've got a lot of dedicated memory used and it's probably debayering it somewhere on the GPU. That is much better than on Premiere Pro. Look, this is not smooth at all. Without the color grades, yeah. Let's put color grade on DaVinci Resolve as well. Let's see how does it do then. I've taken the noise reduction off. But that is smooth. Similar color grade. That's very, very smooth. I mean, to be playback native resolution like that, that's absolutely insane. And last clip that we're gonna try, 12K timeline performance here. Bear in mind, this is 8K timeline here. It's not playing it back, but let's put it to 4K timeline because why would you do that? Okay, 4K timeline without the color grade. It's doing its job very, very well in Premiere Pro. If we do the same thing, timeline without the color grade, quarter of resolution, which is roughly 4K, 12K divided by four, Similar here, but the CPU is much more utilized on Premiere Pro than on DaVinci Resolve. Now adding color grade, very, very smooth as well. I have no problem with the timeline performance. Now going back to DaVinci Resolve, here we have the timeline. Let me add the color grade here as well without the noise reduction, because we know that noise reduction absolutely kills this, this GPU. And now timeline performance, very, very smooth. I'd say probably even smoother than Premiere Pro. And then press play. No problem. Absolutely no problem with the color grade. Now, when we were looking at the hardware results here, obviously the iGPU we didn't see do anything. We can see that the total board power maximum we pulled on the GPU was 314. I did update it previously, but it was 320 watts, something like that, 314 watts. Something like that. And then on the CPU, we were pulling max around 207 watts and hit 90, 80, 81C. Uh, CCD1 uh, was 92, but it's all right. One last thing we're going to do is do a export test, okay? I've made a timeline here where there's all bunch of clips and there's all the clips that we've already tested. The ones that are yellow don't have a color grade or noise reduction on and these that are blue have on. And the whole timeline is roughly about 20 minutes. And the settings for export we're going to use is YouTube, but the only thing we're going to change is uh, 4K uh, YouTube, okay? We're going to add this to the render queue. We're going to go to this uh, test desktop. And we're gonna call this test. I'm gonna save this. And now let's see how fast does it take to render. Let's get these up here as well. So we can check these while it's doing that. See what hardware does it use to render it out. Okay, render all. Let's see. So it's doing it faster than real time. Let's see if this is gonna be the case. Video codec one. So it is using the GPU encoders 
to actually put this together. 314 watts on the GPU pulled, CPU about 90, so that's about 400 plus watt export. Let's see how long is it gonna take. Alrighty, the export is done now, and as you can see, it took 18 minutes and 30 seconds to get this done. Obviously, this is the first time I've done the export test, so I don't have the comparisons with this one, and I don't think I can do exactly the same test on Premiere Pro to compare the export times. Now, we could do just like a simple H.264 to H.265 kind of export, but I don't think a lot of people are doing that. If you're working in video editing production, most likely you're not gonna have just H.265 to H.264 version what you want to do is your whole project with color grades and transitions and all sorts of things you want to know how much that is faster because this is what you know makes the project so that's what we're kind of doing in here lots of different codecs different resolutions upscaling downscaling not much so much upscaling but downscaling from 8k 6k 5k to 4k and we're pushing this out at h264 youtube settings there actually gpu memory usage was 18 megabytes sorry 18 gigabytes uh, used on there so quite a lot actually there for this export total board power was 375 watts being pulled from the socket which is interesting because it's actually pulling more than what i saw used in some of the like firmark testing which is interesting and the cpu actually the die here was quite a lot 91 degrees and we pulled maximum about 213 watts which is not the 100 percent utilization what you can see in cinebench but this is another example to show that even when exporting video you're not going to be 100 percent maxing out the cpu so basically in conclusion i would say for davinci resolve it's all right a very very similar performance to premiere pro as soon as we hit the noise reduction on the gpu we were a little bit struggling now any of the 4k footage i'd say is completely fine but I'm surprised that we're not playing back this 6K footage uh, in Premiere Pro that we actually did play a little bit better back on the DaVinci Resolve. As soon as you have the noise reduction on, it's an end of the story. Up to 4K, I think it can handle the noise reduction there on DaVinci Resolve. But when we're getting above 4K footage, the noise reduction just kills the system and it's, it's no good. Now, I do think DaVinci Resolve is much better at utilizing the hardware and much more efficient in the hardware playback because when you were seeing some of the same footage when we did Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve side to side, you can see when we were in Premiere Pro, we can hear the fans ramping up and it's pulling much more CPU power, but the same on DaVinci Resolve, it was much more efficient. So the, I don't know if it's the code that's built or written a little bit more efficiently, but the DaVinci Resolve software with the same clips, similar color grade, obviously, you know, you've got lots and things in there. They're not exactly the same color grade, but the same kind of level of um, color grade on top of it. It worked much better. So I think when you are using DaVinci Resolve and if noise reduction isn't really like a big issue for you, then the Radeon 7900XDX works better than in Premiere Pro. But still, I think the AMD combo is not ideal because, as you saw, when we were at the H.265 codex here, because AMD doesn't offer hardware acceleration, it's just not working so well. It's very, very laggy and you can't do anything about it. That's what you're going to be working with. That's why I think video editors should really go with Intel because Intel does offer the quick sync and this will be buttery, buttery smooth when using this on Intel system. Go have a look at my 3900K uh, timeline performance review, for example, if you want to see that. If you want me to improve this test, let me know what you'd like to see in the comment section below. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. I appreciate you and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.